with that, this is the outline of today's presentation. Uh, as I said, this is uh, an introduction class to the uh, system design, uh, we call it system design basics. We briefly go through very basics of the reverse osmosis and RO membranes, uh, followed by uh, general aspects of the system design, including major definitions of the system, processes, water characterization, critical parameters, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and very brief overview of the Q plus of our Q plus software. As I said, this is an introductory session and details and uh, hands-on examples and experience of how to use our software in the particular situations for particular applications will be shown in the follow-up sessions. Okay, let's start with the fundamentals. RO uh, is a membrane-based filtration technique used to separate dissolved solids from a solution, particularly from uh, water-based solutions. Uh, this cartoon shows how reverse osmosis compares to other membrane-based and conventional filtration techniques. As shown on this figure, reverse osmosis offers the finest filtration uh, currently available uh, in practice, rejecting most dissolved solids and other contaminants. The most common applications for reverse osmosis include desalination for potable use and preparation of water for boiler makeup to pressure boilers. Other include, but not limited to, ultra-pure water for microelectronics industry, pharmaceuticals, food and beverages, dairy, and last but not the least, wastewater treatment for both industrial and municipal needs. To understand how reverse osmosis works, it is first necessary to understand the process of osmosis. Basically, uh, let's consider uh, a divided by a semi-permeable membrane a container. Uh, one compartment of this container has a solution with a high concentration of dissolved solids, while the other compartment has a solution with the low concentration. The membrane allows water to pass through it, but it is impermeable to most dissolved solids. Osmosis is the natural process where water will flow from the compartment with low concentration to the compartment with high concentration. Water will continue to flow through this membrane in that direction until the concentration is equalized on both sides of the membrane. At equilibrium, there is no more flow. However, the compartment that once contained the higher concentration solution now has a higher water level than the other compartment. The difference in height between the two compartments corresponds to the osmotic pressure of the solution, delta pi. In reverse osmosis, we apply pressure greater than the osmotic pressure on the compartment that once contained uh, the high concentration solution. This pressure forces water to pass through the membrane in the opposite direction. Water now moves from the compartment with the high concentration solution to that with the low concentration. And uh, as a result, the water in one compartment is purified and the solids in the other compartments are concentrated. In reality, however, reverse osmosis membranes are not an absolute barrier to the dissolved solids. And some dissolved solids will go through the membrane along with water. Water and solute fluxes defined as the ratio of the flow rates over the membrane sur surface area, are the two key parameters of the reverse osmosis process. The water or permit flux of the RO membrane, that is, uh, it is JW, is proportional uh, to its water transport coefficient, A, which is a unique constant for each membrane material, and the net driving pressure, NDP, and DP is defined as a difference between the pressure gradient and osmotic gradient on both sides of the membrane. The salt transport flux, JS, is proportional to the salt transfer coefficient B, which, 
as the water transfer coefficient is unique for each membrane type and the salt concentration gradient delta C. Uh, there are two major types of filtration, dead-end or direct flow and cross-flow. In the dead-end filtration, all of the feed water passes through the membrane, leaving the solids behind on the membrane. It is a batch process. The filtration system needs to be taken offline and the filter needs to be either cleaned or replaced. In cross-flow filtration, feed water passes tangentially over the membrane surface rather than perpendicularly to it. Water and some dissolved solids pass through the membrane, while the majority of dissolved solids and some water do not pass through the membrane. Cross-flow helps to minimize fouling or scaling of the reverse osmosis membrane. In theory, cross-flow is a continuous operation, but in practice, the cross-flow is not always enough uh, to prevent all fouling and uh, scaling. Periodically, the membranes need to be taken offline and cleaned. Okay, uh, a very important factor that may have a significant impact on the membrane performance uh, is concentration polarization. This phenomenon consists of the formation of a boundary layer along the membrane feed surface due to the laminar flow near the membrane and as a result, concentration of salt in this layer. As you can see during the flow along the membrane, a boundary layer delta is formed. Two different types of flow occur in the boundary layer. A convective flow of water from the bulk solution through the membrane and a diffusion flow of rejected solutes from the membrane surface back to the feed flow. Since the rate of the convective flow of water is typically higher than the diffusion flow, then the salts that are rejected by the membrane uh, tends to accumulate in the boundary layer with the highest salt concentration, CM, occurring at the surface of the membrane. Concentration polarization has a negative effect on the performance of the RO membrane. It increases the osmotic pressure, uh, delta pi m, within, within the boundary layer, effectively reducing the driving force for water through the membrane. Secondly, the higher concentration of solutes on the membrane surface than in the bulk section, Cm, leads to the higher passage of the solutes. In the most simplistic way, the RO process can be described by three flows, one incoming feed flow and two outcoming flows, permit and concentrate. Each flow is characterized by its rate, pressure, and concentration of dissolved solids. Two major parameters that characterize the RO uh, process, the RO system and its process are permit flux, which is the ratio of the permit rate to the membrane surface area, we already talked about this, JW, and uh, salt rejection. Salt rejection is a relative measure of how much of the salt that was initially in the source water is rejected by the RO membrane. Another parameter closely related to rejection is salt passage, SP, which is simply 1 minus uh, rejection. It is indicative of the amount of salts that remain in the permit. Another important parameter is uh, recovery. It is used to describe what volume percentage of feed water is recovered as a permit. Okay, we already know what NDP is, net driving pressure. This is the pressure available to drive the feed water through the membrane, minus osmotic and the permit back pressure. Here we also added losses associated with the flow along the membrane, dp, the difference between the feed and the concentrate pressure, and it is called differential pressure. Finally, one more definition, the specific flux. It characterizes the resistance of the membrane to water flow and is calculated by dividing the average flux by ndp. In a sense, uh, it's an analog of the water transport coefficient a in the transport equation for the reverse osmosis.
for a system designer, it is very important to understand how the major operation conditions, such as feed salinity, temperature, pressure, and system recovery, affect the membrane. Right? Um, this is a very simplistic illustration of that. Operating pressure directly affects water flux and indirectly affects salt rejection. Because operating pressure directly affects the driving force of water across the membrane, higher pressure will result in the higher flux. Salt transport, however, is not affected by pressure directly, but because more water has passed through the membrane at higher pressure, the absolute salt concentration in the permit is lower, right? So it appears as if the salt passage decreases and the salt rejection increases as pressure increases. The next figure to your right uh, shows the effect of salinity on flux and rejection under conditions of constant pressure. Salinity affects both flux and rejection directly. As salinity increases, the driving force for water flux decreases because of the high osmotic pressure, while the solid flux increases because of the high concentration gradient, and therefore the apparent system rejection goes down. Temperature uh, dependence, temperature effect works, works in the opposite direction for flux and rejection. The flux increases with the temperature while the rejection goes down. Both phenomena are related to diffusion through the membrane. Finally, uh, let's see the recovery effects uh, on uh, flux and rejection. As the recovery increases, uh, the water flux decreases because of the increase in the osmotic pressure until the recovery is so high that the osmotic pressure of the feed water is as high as the applied pressure, and in which case the driving force for water through the membrane becomes zero and the flow stops. The drop in water flux affects the apparent salt rejection in the similar way. 